Hello, my name is Dr. Paul Gosney, and I'll be talking to you today about the psychiatric history, the mental state examination, and risk assessment. So we're going to aim to cover these areas today, to understand why we conduct a psychiatric assessment, to think about the knowledge that we need to gather and how we gather that knowledge, to think about how we examine a patient's mental state and how we record those examination findings in our notes, to think about the need to assess both the patient's mental and physical health, and importantly, to understand how we put that information together to reach a diagnosis and start to plan management, including a risk assessment and risk management. So these are the aims of the assessment. First of all, we need to create a safe environment in which to interview the patient, and that means it needs to be safe both for you and for the patient. There are some basic safety steps that you should take, for example, making sure that you're nearer to the door. And you need to learn to trust your instincts. If a situation feels unsafe, then it probably is unsafe, and you need to think about how you're going to manage that. The aim of the assessment is to gather sufficient information to make a diagnosis and to establish a plan of care. But we also need to be able to communicate with other health professionals, maybe other psychiatrists or other doctors or nursing staff. We need to be able to communicate with the patient and with informants, such as family and friends. We need to think about how we're going to record that information so that it makes sense to the reader. And of course, we need to feed back to the patient and their carers about how we can help the situation. So the psychiatric history. We will gather information for the psychiatric history from a variety of sources. First of all, we may have a letter or a telephone conversation from the referrer. This may be a GP, a police officer, or an A&E doctor. Importantly, we're going to be interviewing the patient there may also be family and friends around who can give us important collateral information. If the GP wasn't the referrer, then we'll need to ask the GP for some background medical and psychiatric history. There may be other healthcare professionals involved in this person's care. These days there are likely to be electronic case notes, or there may be paper case notes stretching back over the years. We will likely to gather a lot of information about known patients this way. The patient may be known to social services, and this would be of particular interest where children are involved. And possibly the patient might be known to the police or probation services. When we're contacting these other sources of information, we need to think about the person giving consent for us to do this. So here is the psychiatric history. Many elements of it will be familiar to you from a standard medical history, but other parts are peculiar to psychiatry, particularly things like the personal history. It's important to realise that you don't need to go through all of these areas in great depth in one sitting with the patient. The key thing is to focus on the areas which are relevant to the patient's presentation and focus on those. And if needs be, you can come back later and interview the patient again if there are areas that you need to fill out. So we're going to go through each part of the psychiatric history. First of all is the presenting complaint, sometimes called the circumstances of admission. This is divided into two parts, the subjective and objective part. The subjective part is the patient's account of why they're in hospital or why they're in front of you. And it's good to quote exactly what the patient says. An example might be, I'm scared of my family. The objective presenting complaint is what the clinician makes of the situation. And so in this example, it might be that the patient is experiencing persecutory ideation in relation to their family. To establish what the presenting complaint is, you'll need to use open questions to help the person communicate. And examples would be, what is it you'd like us to help you with? Can you describe the problems you've been having recently? Why do you think your GP has sent you to see us? 